Hey, what's up YouTube? I just released those stylized trees as a tier 2 reward on my Patreon, and I thought, well, why not use this as an opportunity to make a small video and talk about my process when it comes to creating this kind of assets, so here it is. The workflow I'm going to somewhat describe is a bit similar to the one I shared in my recent desert scene breakdown video, so feel free to give that video a look as well for extra information. I'll keep this video somewhat brief, so let's not waste any time and get right into it. Ok, so usually my overall process is the following. 1. Create the leaves slash small branches, texture set, albedo, opacity mask and so on. 2. Create the mesh cards. 3. Create the 3 base mesh, usually using curves. 4. Instantiate those mesh cards here and there on some of those branches using the snap tool. 5. Once I'm happy with the overall look, sculpt the tree mesh if needed and bake it on a low poly mesh. It's usually quite a fast but iterative process, right? At least for me. So while I may create a tree somewhat rapidly, I may need multiple passes and attempts to get the desired volume, look and feel. The thing is, I most often don't have the feel for what's gonna look best right away, so I often need to try different leaf shapes, different silhouettes for branches and for the tree itself, and experiment with leaf density both on the texture and with cards and that kind of thing. I also sometimes have issues getting the desired canopy silhouette, and you can only check the result in engine once you have at least a somewhat completed tree, right? Also, ideally, you do that as soon as possible anyway, to see if the style you're going for, the detail frequency and overall silhouette complexity fits well with the rest of your environment and foliage and that kind of thing. So definitely there's a lot of back and forth, right? Don't be afraid to try things often and early, and iterate quickly. So I first started by modeling a few high poly leaves in Blender. Nothing too fancy about that part, if you're somewhat familiar with your favorite 3D software, you should have no issue here. Then using curves, I created a few branches and instantiated some of these high poly leaves here and there. Now I used an orthographic camera to render those meshes and create my leaf texture set, right? So I made sure to model everything so that it fit within that camera view. Also at this point it's best to foresee what kind of cards you'll have to create. Big branches with lots of leaves, smaller branches with only a few leaves, individual leaves, dead branches and so on. You also should think in terms of geometry. If the texture ends up quite densely packed, well you might still be able to detour those individual branches and so on to create your cards using quite a few vertices, but don't forget about LODs. You'll need to create LODs and so you'll most likely need much simpler cards at one point as well, and that might not be an option if things are too tightly packed on the texture. So give your meshes some room and margin, right, and possibly try quite early to detour those branches with the simplest geometry possible, like a single quad, and foresee any trouble. Again, it's a bit of a back and forth, right, but that process should somewhat organically lead you to create that kind of layout with quite evenly spaced out meshes. Ok, now that I had my leaves and branches model, I rendered all necessary textures, and since it's all actual geometry, I always try to render as much information as possible, whether it be obviously the normal map, using this simple shader to convert normals from world to tangent space, and obviously the opacity mask as well, and tons of gradients and other masks, branch mask, random value per leaf, root to tip gradient, edge gradient, and so on. The albedo was hand painted in GIMP, I kept it somewhat simple. Adding too much details in the albedo quite rapidly leads to a lot of visual noise when it comes to foliage, so I like to keep it somewhat simple when creating stylized trees. At this point, I had cut out all necessary cards. Now, when it comes to foliage having a lot of transparency, it's usually best practice to avoid as much overdraw as possible, but then adding too much vertices to properly cut out your cards can lead to quite a big impact on performance as well, especially if you poorly manage your LODs and do quite a bit of vertex processing to create complex wind animation and so on. So really, it's all about balance. Honestly, I can only suggest you to profile and see for yourself, like maybe create a huge forest and try different scenarios, Use high poly cards but as little overdraw as possible, measure performance, and then use very low poly cards and compare and see what the ideal middle ground is for your typical view distance, targeted hardware and all that. Anyway, moving on, I then duplicated those cards, fixed their orientation and pivots, and distorted them a bit to give them some volume. That drastically helps to create trees that are much more dense, because each card is more visible from more angles, if that makes sense. 
No, a stylized tree is pretty much all about the canopy silhouette, right? So at that point, I'd say there's two workflows. You could instantiate those cards to first focus on the canopy and the overall tree volume, and then model the tree trunk and branches around that. Or you could first model the tree trunk and branches and duplicate those cards on the resulting mesh. The latter is in my opinion a bit more organic, since you're kinda constrained to create cards based on that mesh. So that constraint naturally adds quite a bit of randomness to the picture, and a decent amount of variation in the leaf density, right? A tree isn't perfectly round and uniform. But then using this technique, it's a bit harder to predict what the end result is going to look like, right? You may actually need a perfectly round and uniform tree, and if so, creating cards first might be easier. Feel free to experiment with both techniques and see which one you prefer. Or use your own, I guess. There's many ways you can go around this. And there's also certainly great tools nowadays to sort of automatically build a tree and spawn cards and do all the dirty job for you. But then I always like to have full artistic control, so personally I tend to not use those kind of tools and prefer the good old manual label. Anyway, so I first model the tree itself using curves. It's super fast and offers a lot of control. I use the 3D cursor in Blender at turn here to very rapidly create arbitrary pivot points and be able to very easily rotate groups of branches that I would duplicate here and there. In a manner of minutes, I had my tree based mesh done. Once that was done, I could duplicate my leaf cards all around, using the tree mesh to naturally kinda guide me through the process. I also try to make efficient use of the big cards and the smaller ones to create a decent sense of volume and add as much randomness as possible. Once I was happy with how that looked in engine, I finally exported the tree base mesh to ZBrush to do a quick sculpting pass. Nothing crazy, I kept things subtle. I also sculpted a very simple tiling wood texture. Then I hand modeled the low poly mesh. You could decimate the high poly sculpt, but I chose to do things by hand to have a much better control over the final tree count and keep things as low poly as possible. Then using Substance Painter, I baked the high poly and created the textures. Now, when it comes to stylized foliage, I'd say it's probably a good idea to try and mess with the mesh normals. Here, for instance, for each tree, I created a sphere and used it as a target of a data transfer modifier to project its normals onto the leaf scars. This usually drastically helps to remove the very flat card look of a low poly tree, right? Where you have one side of those cards lit and the other side unlit. Also, you may want to keep normals unmodified and have them facing in one specific direction still, because it may work best when creating realistic foliage and using the two-sided foliage shading model. As usual, feel free to experiment and try different normal setup and shading models, right? I personally tend to use a very simple subsurface material with custom normals most of the time. Alright, at that point the tree was pretty much done. One last final touch though, I baked a random value pair leaf card in a second UV map, and also the normalized length, which comes handy to control the wind animation strength. Feel free to watch the video I made dedicated to baking data into UVs. Moving on, I mentioned LODs earlier, right? Now, Unreal Engine comes with a great, great built-in tool to quickly and easily create LODs and reduce tree count. But I like to have control over that process, so I usually prefer to do this by hand, especially when there's cards with transparency involved. 
First thing I did for LOD1 was to swap all cards with much simpler variants, hence why I said it's important when creating the leaf textures to account for those simpler cards and have some margin within that leaf texture. Now the switch from LOD0 to 1 is probably going to be noticeable here, so you kind of have to be careful with the amount of distortion and bend you initially add to the cards, because that same bend is going to be gone on those simpler cards, right? And that might be quite visible. Here I could probably have done a better job, but oh well. The trunk was decimated and some vertices were further collapsed by hand, and also some smaller branches were erased. Feel free to try and place your camera at the desired distance, and try removing bits of geometry here and there, and see if you can spot the difference. If not, then it's probably safe to delete and save some vertices. I then created a second LOD, this time removing quite a few cards, most notably the smaller ones, trying my best not to mess with the overall silhouette too much, and the trunk was even further simplified, obviously. Most branches are gone at that point. Now, ideally, a third LOD should be created, a sort of billboard using a single quad or something, but then it's a bit hard to create and make it look decent from all point of views. Unreal Engine has tools for this though, but I've yet to experiment with them. By the way, I'll have a few must-watch GDC talks on foliage linked in the video description below. And that's pretty much it for one tree. <laughs> Rinse and repeat, create variants, and voila, you got yourself a cute little set of stylized trees. Regarding materials, well, for the tree trunk it's quite a simple material. Here I sample the maps baked from the Hypolis cult, right? Color, normal, roughness, ambient occlusion, and specular. Notice that color curve thing here, well, that lets me customize the color map along the tree's height using a normalized vertical gradient. So I can tweak the color map at the base of the trunk all the way up to the branches tips. Quite neat. Then here I add a bit of detail texturing using textures baked from that tiling wood sculpt I showed earlier. I created a material switch here to create a material instance that has a specific feature disabled for distant LODs, because at a distance such fine details are not visible anyway, so you might as well reduce the amount of pixel instructions and texture samplers. For the leaves material it's a bit more complex. Here I sample a color map and add a vertical color gradient, similar to how I did that for the trunk material, just that I don't sample a color curve to skip a texture sampler and I just lure between two colors. Specular and roughness values are driven by edge and root to tip gradients. Normal map here that I turn off on distant LODs, opacity mask, SSS color on amount, SSS is disabled on branches using a branch mask stored in that mask texture, and also I have a top down color gradient going on. Here are some pixel depth offset that I also turn off on distant LODs. It offsets pixel in camera space based on that random value per leaf on a height value that may help to hide that flat card look just a bit by making the intersecting lines between two cards not so apparent. It's a dirty trick. And finally, the wind animation technique is very similar to the one I explained in my Desert Scene Breakdown video, so I'll let you watch that video and also take a peek at this project to know more if you're interested. It's available as a tier 2 reward on my Patreon, along with many other projects and assets. And voila, that's pretty much it. Now this is obviously one very specific looking stylized tree, right? And stylization is all about art direction. And there's probably an infinite amount of ways to make a tree look unique, and thus an infinite amount of valid workflows to achieve that look. And I'm never going to suggest or pretend that a specific technique or workflow I explain or describe in my videos is the one right way of doing things. And here is no exception, it's just my way of doing things, and you could probably achieve a similar or better looking result using a very different workflow, and really, as long as you reach your end goal in a reasonable time frame and feel comfortable with your own techniques, well, that's all that matters. Alright, I hope you found that video useful, stay tuned for more, I have quite a few more things planned for this month, so please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Thanks for watching, thanks to all my Patreon supporters, I see you and I appreciate you, and I'll see you in the next video, take care of yourself, bye bye!